Hello everyone, welcome back to another session on Ultrax interview questions. So in the last session, uh, we discussed about the first 10 questions of Ultrax interview. So if you're working as an Ultrax developer, uh, then that will be really, really helpful for you. And if you can go through all those questions again, if you have not seen that particular video, then you can go back and check out that part one. Today we'll be discussing the next 10 questions. So those next question, next 10 questions will help you to understand Ultrax in another way where like you will get in-depth information basically and uh, you need to make sure that how you are answering the questions to the interviewer that uh, really matters basically uh, you can memorize the interview questions that's what normally everyone does and i have seen a lot of people who just memorize the questions uh, from somewhere and uh, they just come for interviews when uh, people ask you the certain questions then you can definitely answer them but when uh, the interviewer starts uh, asking you the in-depth or conceptual questions there the candidates lags okay so they will not be able to answer the questions at that point of time because they don't have the in-depth knowledge they don't have uh, the real-time working experience and all so in these kind of scenarios like uh, you have very less chances so if you want to make yourself uh, completely ready for the interviewers or interviews your jobs you want to get your dream job as ultra designer ultra developer okay then you can definitely look into the ultrax as a whole so you have to make sure that you understand the things in a clear way we have discussed about how to answer the questions how to explain in a way in such a way where where the interviewer will get uh, understanding that yes you have really worked you have to tell them about the examples which you have performed in your Ultrix design or Ultrix workflows in your real-time projects. You have to explain them that what was the problem and how you uh, worked to solve that. So the main thing is like how you are going to give the solution. So basically that's the main thing because Ultrix is just a kind of mathematics problem. Okay. So in mathematical problem, what happens? You have to find a solution. So that solution will work, come based on some kind of logic, some kind of calculations, and then you will come to a solution. Same thing here. It's really interesting when you start working on Ultrix or when you have already worked on Ultrix, you might have realized that it's very interesting to find a real-time workflow or to solve a problem. So it, really, it becomes really, really interesting while working in the real-time projects. So these are the uh, first 10 questions which you have already seen. And today we'll see the remaining uh, 10 questions for today and the remaining 10 questions in the next part. I'm digging 10, 10 questions so that you can easily understand the things. So the first thing is like, is uh, Ultrix an ETL or ELT basically? Okay, so don't think in that way that people might call it as a ETL tool or extract transform load or ELT extract load and transform. Okay, so don't think in that perspective. Ultrix, people would call it, okay, I can do the same thing in this tool or that tool. Yes, you can do that. But Ultrix can do much more than that. Okay, Ultrix can do creative analytics. Ultrix can do statistical modeling. Ultrix can do a lot of apps. You can do spatial analysis, which other tools can't do. So that is the one thing which you have to understand that Ultrix is not just a normal tool. It is much more advanced. Yeah, there are competitors to Ultrix. Yes, they are, they are also working fine. But it's your choice to go ahead with one tool and keep on learning new tools or new software because that is how we grow in our lives and in our uh, jobs, in our professional life also. So Ultrix is not an ETL or ELT software, much more, more advanced than an analytical product. Here you can do basic, basic ETL. Yes, you can do advanced data transformations, processing and data modeling also. Also, you can create analytic apps. That's what you have to explain. Means what you have done and how it has helped you in your real-time projects and how it has helped your business, okay? Your company, your projects with whom you have worked with. So you have to explain in that way so that the, front, uh, the other person who is interviewing you can get idea yeah you are a genuine person you know your stuff what you are speaking so when the other person thinks that you know your stuff the remaining time becomes very easy okay so it will become very easy for you to impress the person that will be the foremost and only important thing for you to do in interviews is tell and explain in such a way that you know your stuff 
what is the use of job tools like uh, like join okay uh, union and join multiple okay so these tools basically helps you to create workflows with multiple data sets which can be joined combined together so we have uh, tools like union and join and join multiple so join helps us to join the tables union to combine append the tables join multiples to get the data from different tables and then join them so what's the difference between join and join multiple that's the thing so join multiple in join you can get like uh, you can get left outer right outer full outer inner join left unjoin right unjoin so you can do these kind of joins while in join multiple the product will be the cartesian join so it will be more of a full outer join so cartesian join or full outer join so that's the difference what are workflow dependencies so if you have worked with uh, alteryx designer in detail or an advanced level of uh, requirements then you will know that workflow dependencies are basically uh, tools which are grouped by like input and output path okay so this question will be asked in interviews or in certifications okay so make sure that you have put uh, some time on that few minutes or few uh, minutes in that okay so basically so data references for example macros so macros are nothing but workflows dependency so okay so that is one of the most important thing you can edit path individually or as a group to be relative or absolute okay so how do we edit path so edit path and workflow dependencies to prepare your workflows before you share and deploy them across organizations to open with the workflow open select advanced options workflow dependencies to open the window you might remember the definition but people might ask you okay what is the option how do you go to how do you navigate to this option or that option so that thing you can get it from here so options advanced options and workflow dependencies so remember this thing don't only remember uh, memorize the definitions or understand the things you need to know what is where navigation in the tool that is the foremost thing when i explain the things in uh, the sessions and all that i tell everyone or i remember whenever i am learning something that which option is where because people might ask you okay how do you do that thing if you do not know how to navigate to that position or to that particular topic how will you tell so this thing is most important thing which browsers are supported by alteryx so basic question very very basic question but still you should be aware that you can use ie edge ie is obviously now uh, gone but you can use edge chrome mozilla safari okay so you can use all these things then you have like what is subscription so these three questions basically on this page whatever you see these are more of a lab um, alteryx gallery question so if you have worked in alters gallery you have you have published your workflows then you might be aware of these things if you are not if you do not have experience of alters gallery then make sure you read about that you understand it and then you can easily do that so subscription so basically a subscription allows a designer designer means people like you and me developers to publish and share workflows privately within our organization i want to share a workflow with you let's say you are working with me in my team and i want to share some workflow with you privately then i can create a subscription for that okay district so district the way name suggests district we are in a state we have a district and then like sub districts and uh, counties and all so so districts is basically a group so a people a set of users a set of people will be part of a district you district to group share public workflows on a home page so that users can easily find them you can see how districts are used in public alters gallery basically a set of people a group what is alters collections so collection is nothing but it's a way by which you can share your workflows with others who are not part of the same subscription so now let's say uh, i have person x he is not part of my subscription but i want to share my workflow so what i'll do i'll create a collection okay so same subscription users can create collections and work add workflows and insights and choose the users groups that have access to them okay collection owner can give other users permission to share a collection and so on these are things which you can read about more so you can read these things it's very very important so these three are of alfres gallery people will not only ask you about the designer the tools and everything people will definitely ask you about the gallery 
how do you do how do you uh, uh, publish how do you share how do you share with uh create with your users outside your organization or inside your organization inside your team so these are things people will definitely ask you because these are normal things which we do it in our real time projects so remaining three questions are what is an altrix engine okay what is an altrix engine altrix engine is an operator by which process which processes basically each record of the workflow altrix engine it consumes your ram remember this altrix engine consumes your ram it uses the machine cores and uh, ram to run your workflows you might have seen that whenever you load data uh, from means big data kind of volume let's say we have loaded few million records and then your workflow so it start behaving like weird okay so in such cases what happens the ram of your machine is almost consumed and because of that altrix engine is behaving so weird okay so this is basically a way by which you know that Altrix engine will consume your RAM. Based on that only, it will show uh, uh, have a good performance and all that stuff. So this is one thing which you should be aware of. What is Altrix multi-threaded processing? These are some advanced things you may may not get this question, but still, if you are going for interview, you have to be prepared completely. So Altrix multi-thread processing (AMP) is basically a new architecture of Altrix engine. as the name implies amp is a multi threaded concept of processing your data in parallel packets so instead of reading or like uh, processing your data at a go in a go okay it will do that processing in parallel okay so <clears throat> record by record here you see the old engine original engine architecture processes data record by record and sequentially to run a workflow while amp will be parallelly done so AMP is designed to work with larger volume of data. Yes, that's a benefit when you work with huge data volume. In that cases, like AMP will work in such a way that you get good performance. So on a higher velocity and typically executes workflow faster compared to the normal behavior. With efficient uses of machine resources. Machine resources means your RAM, your capacity, all that is part of your resources. What are Altrix macros? So this is the question for today. The last question: What are Altrix macros? So macro is a workflow, basically a group of tools built into single tool. Basically, macro. The way name suggests automation. It helps us to automate our workflows or our processes. There are different types of macro: batch macro, iterative macro, location optimizer macro, and standard macro. So these are basically uh, tools of set of tools which are inserted to another workflows. why do we create macros so that we can uh, automate some processes some kind of repeat repeated process then what we can do we can automate that how we can automate that with the help of macros what are macro tools now let's say if i am asking you that uh, and you are explaining me this which tools are used in macros what is the specific tools we have filter everything all the tools preparation tool join all that stuff but specific macro tools what are those If you have not worked on macros, you will not be able to answer this. So, what you should do? You need to work on that. What are those tools? Interface tools. So, interface tools are the tools which will make your workflow as a macro or an app. So, this way, Mac interface tools will be working. Okay. So, those are the main things which you need to do. So, today uh, we discuss about Altrix. what is altrix why do we call it as an etl or a advanced tool join join multiple union workflow dependencies remember this thing this might be asked in certifications this might be asked in interviews then what is subscription discrete and collection this is part of altrix gallery so you should be aware of what happens in designer what happens in gallery engine about what is happening at the back end so this thing tells you about what is happening at the back end it's not only about designer creating workflows and all you should know that how you can get the good performance out of your workflows if your workflows are taking lot of time they are not working properly they are not optimized everything is gone into dust okay it is not going to help the business so what do you do you have to make sure that everything is optimized properly all the workflows are working in the right way and then good to go so this is something what we do so that's all from my side for today uh, we'll meet soon okay and for the part 3 and till then thank you very much do share with your friends colleagues 
so that they can also learn something from this session thank you very much have a great day ahead